News Talk On Demand. Interruption-free audio, where you want it, when you want it. John Gorman, welcome back, and uh, thanks for checking in wherever we find you on this day. And it is a beautiful, big, blue-sky, sunny kind of day. Well, it's funny how life works. Uh, lots of books come through here because whether there's a book signing on at uh, one of the chapter's locations, uh, the great McNally Robinson in Saskatoon, or any of the bookstores around the province, you know, I'll often see a book. And this very interesting, graphically, uh, just riveting book called Not in the Pink uh, arrives, and it's about a a woman who's an artist and her journey through breast cancer. And I look at the name, and it's funny, Tina Martell, and I think to myself, because I used to know somebody named Tina Martell. I grabbed the letter, and sure enough, it is the Tina Martell who I grew up with in the Battlefords. Uh, she is a graphic artist, uh, an instructor in graphic arts uh, at her home in Grand Prairie, and uh, she's doing a book signing and launch uh, tomorrow night in Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatoon's McNally Robinson, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, the book Not in the Pink. And Tina Martell is here. How you doing? I'm doing pretty well, John. That's been a year or two or three. Uh, you have an age, though. Uh, I've lost all my hair the natural way. and uh, oh, Well, I lost all mine, too, but the, uh, um, it's, yeah. uh, some of it's come back. No, you look fabulous. Well, thank um, you. So, so you start the perspective of this journey. You're, you're diagnosed um, fall of 2011 with stage 2 breast cancer. As an artist, does this become something that you're because clearly you've documented this so carefully so how, how did you do the documenting as, as you went through the journey well the documentation for me is, was a really natural process because as an artist that's what i do i make work and uh, i was out of my studio of course while i was being treated and um as an artist when i'm not making work i get pretty anxious and antsy and I thought if I brought my sketchbooks with me while I was going through treatment, then what I could do is I could express myself. And I take photographs all the time. I document everything. I'm also a mixed media artist, so I work a lot with collage, and which means that I, I save everything. I save menus. I save So I saved all my medical records, and I was also taking a video while I was doing that. So I simply documented everything, and that's where it started from. Okay, this is what I was going to ask mm -hmm. you, because, of course, I am a Philistine when it comes to art. <laughs> uh, but because it was the collage effectiveness, because mm -hmm. it's so graphically, uh, I mean, every page you turn. So, uh, I mean, is a lot of this from the actual, like a lot of the documents and the background shots and these things, uh, is this you and the, the, the treatments? Yes, it is. It's so photographs of me. It's my documents. It is my paintings. It is my drawings. I think in the entire book, maybe there's three stock photos that I used and wow. everything else was mine. So the, the purpose of the book then it's, I mean, in a way it's intensely personal because it's written in the first person. It's like a diary, but in another way, it really does tell the story to the observer. So what, what were you trying to set out to do when you decided that this, maybe there was a book here? I think I wanted to express myself, well, my journey, as you said, but I also, I could, I talked to so many women who were going through treatment that it wasn't what we expected. It wasn't what we were told. We were not on a journey to enlightenment. We were not, you know, I mean, I got pushed down this road. I got sick. I didn't choose to go here. This was not a spiritual path. And a lot of the information in the books out there seemed to me that you were either doing one of two things. You were reading a book that was, this is the greatest thing that ever happened to me, and cancer is a gift. And uh, I, I'm really not buying that. I, a gift comes with a receipt, and you can take it back. And you can't take this back. <laughs> so, True. and the other kind of book seemed to be a how-to book. Oh. And I don't know how to have cancer. I've only done it the one time, so I'm no expert. And I just simply wanted to talk about what it was really like and what it was like for me. And what I suspected was it, it was like for a lot of women that weren't buying into the whole, this is a fantastic place to be in. And that's what I wrote. Tina Martell is here. The book is called Not in the Pink. Your account, and I mean, and you've got these fragmentary, I mean, a lot of it's like a diary, but you've got these fragmentary accounts. At the Canadian Cancer Society, there is a room full of wigs. And you sort of go through the wig thing, and then, as per usual, I'm being uncooperative. And then big words, petulant, problematic. Um, the wig thing didn't work. <laughs> the wig thing did not work for me. I, I tried. That day I tried. I went in. I tried wigs on. 
I, you know, went through this whole spectrum of I look like my grandmother, I look like my father, or, oh my God, I look like the church lady from Saturday Night Live. This was not working for me, any of it. And I just went, I'm not doing this. When, when my hair falls out, it's going, I'm finished. And that's what I did. I just shaved it off and that was me. Another part of the book, and I, again, it's, it's sad so much of this book, but it's hopeful and so, so much of it's funny. Uh, Dear God, it's me. Please get me out of this one. I will never do this again. No, really. And the line is, of course, this is the prayer you recited for most of your teenage years. And I think, who, <laughs> didn't everybody? I guess, didn't everybody do that? You know, just this once, please. I'll never do this again, God. Um, and I laughed out loud when I read that because it's so much. I mean, so, so you found yourself at various times sort of reverting to that prayer. Sure, I did. I mean, I think you get pretty desperate. You'll try everything. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, maybe this time she'll listen. But, <laughs> you know, it, it didn't work. It didn't work during my teenage years, and it didn't work this time. <laughs> Tina, Tina Martell is here, not in the pink. Um, so the, the perp, as the book goes on, so it starts with the diagnosis, fall 2011. Where does it end and how? Well, I'm standing here, so <laughs> that, that's, how, that's how it ends. I always say, I've done a couple of uh, readings with this book, and one of the things I always say is I don't want to read the end because I'm going to give it away. <laughs> but uh, I'm here, I'm still standing, I'm, I'm still laughing most days, and, uh, you know, for me it was, um, they're still watching me, I have to admit. I, I go in every six months, I'm considered high risk, and every six months I still have to have my appointments, and they're you know, anxiety ridden and you never know. I, I think you probably live with this for the rest of your life. You're always worried that it's going to come back and when is it going to come back or if it's going to come back and there's really nothing you can do. Breast cancer touches so many people. I mean, we know the stats, but we also know, of course, you go to the next, you know, one or two ripples in the pond and it touches families, it touches partners, it touches children of, parents of. What's the response been from other people who have been through breast cancer and have read the book? It runs the gamut. Uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm quite pleased about is the fact that people, like you said, found it funny, found it touching. They got angry. They cried. And uh, they felt like that I was expressing their journey and through my words because there were so many crossovers on things that happened to them that happened to me. And I, I think I kind of wrote it for the patient at the beginning and then realized that the families were really becoming engaged in this as well, that they were finding it interesting. And I think what happens sometimes is we're not always that honest about what happens to us. We try to put a brave face on it so nobody knows what's happening. And families start to think it's not that big a deal. And they don't realize sometimes what their, their loved ones are going through. And I thought, I'm going to tell them. Can you stay here for a few minutes? Yeah, sure. Tina Martell's here. The book is called Not in the Pink. Uh, she's at uh, Saskatoon's McNally Robinson tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, uh, signing and roll out of the book. We'll chat more about the journey through breast cancer. I'm John Gormley. This is 650-CKOM and 980-CJM. I'm John Gormley. Thank you for joining us today. An interesting guest with us, uh, a Sask expat, uh, Tina Martell, uh, originally from the Battlefords, an artist, an art instructor in Alberta, and uh, author of Not in the Pink. And it is a book that is her journey through breast cancer. The title, Not in the Pink. Um, why that title? It had a, has a couple of meanings, right? It doesn't. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for some of your younger listeners, they might not remember the phrase in the pink, which meant uh, you were healthy. Right. Okay. And I can't, I don't know, that's been around for a long time. I, I was brought up with that. And I thought, well, not in the pink definitely meant I right. was yeah. not healthy. But there was also a, another meaning for me because of the entire pink culture that's wrapped around breast cancer. And I have to admit that I'm, I'm, I resented it after a while. I resented the fact that my clothing had to have pink ribbons on it and there was pink teddy bears and there was all of this infantilization really of women. That's how I felt uh, with being forced into being almost a little girl. You weren't treated like a woman anymore. There was pink. You know, I can almost guarantee you that there's not a man out there with testicular cancer who's wearing baby blue ribbons on his shorts. I can yeah. guarantee it. So the title was really my little nod to, to both of those things, not being healthy and not really wanting to be involved with that pink culture. I, I think it came from a good place. Don't get me wrong. It came from the place of having, bringing awareness to breast cancer. 
And now everyone has co-opted this. And it's what does it mean now? Yeah. And there's an honesty in the book, which is very much as your account is. This is somebody going through each stage. Was there a stage, and again, the book traces the ups, the downs, there's a lot of humor in it, there's a lot of sadness in it. As you went through all of those stages, was there one that was the worst? Oh, definitely through chemotherapy. Yeah, I. the one night I remember waking up and they had just given me a new drug. It was the first one, I, the first treatment I'd had with that drug. And I woke up about 3 o'clock in the morning and I just didn't feel right. And I went and I looked in the mirror in the bathroom and I looked at my face and my face was swollen and... My eyes were swollen and my tongue was swollen and I could tell that my neck was swelling up and I thought, I could die. This could kill me. And I did really the only sensible thing. I'd had enough. I went back to bed. I thought I'm either dead in the morning or I get up. (laughs) In any event, you're going to have to lay down. (laughs) In any event, I was going to have to lay down. And for me, that was definitely the toughest. Chemotherapy, I had a terrible, terrible time with chemotherapy. The losing my hair, whatever, that was nothing. Uh, losing your eyebrows and your eyelashes. I sort of started to take you into boiled egg category, and that was not fun. That was not fun. Tina Martell is here. The book is not in the pink. So the now, and this had hit you at a time of your life, uh, fall of 2011. You just started teaching. Um, you're an, an instructor in the Faculty of Art in Grand Prairie. Uh, the time you take away from the rest of life to fight the health battle. I mean, this is a big battle. How do you deal with all of those? I mean, you, you talk in the book about going back to work and everybody goes way too early. Oh, way too early. My oncologist was not happy with me. He said, you can't go back. And I went, well, I, I, I really, I have to. I mean, it's such an expensive journey too. I mean, you know, it costs you so much, even though we have insurance and we have all of those things, it's still, the cost is incredible. And I, I wanted to get back to work. I wanted to get back to my life. And um, I went back, and I went back way too soon, and I paid for it. And I would say, do not do that. Anybody who's going to do that, stop. Do anything in the world that you can. Do not do that. So look after really yourself? really tough. Look after yourself, yeah. I would find myself back at work at times, and I, the chemo fog, chemo brain that they talk about, it's real. I mean, honestly, anybody who's going to go through this, I recommend you buy Post-it notes. Well, tons and tons of Post-it notes. Buy stock in Post-it notes, because <laughs> you're going to need them. <laughs> Tina Martell is at uh, Saskatoon's McNally Robinson tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, uh, the launch of uh, Not in the Pink. You know, you hope nobody has to go through this, but thousands of women, including thousands who are listening now, we're, are going to go through it. What's the advice? Be real. Stick up for yourself. Advocate for yourself. Ask questions. Don't do whatever they tell you to. Ask them why they're doing it. Make yourself heard. Make sure they know you're a person. And if you're not happy with something, speak up, because we don't. We're too quiet. Good point. Great seeing you again. Good to see you. And I hope it isn't measured in decades next time. (laughs) No, it won't be. You take care. (laughs) Thank you. Tina Martell, not in the pink. She's at Saskatoon's McNally Robinson tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. And uh, it is the launch in Saskatchewan of this book. And it is a remarkable, graphically, I mean, she's an artist. It's a a book of collages and uh, visually a very, very interesting book. I'm John Gormley. You know, time flies around here every given day, so we have to go. But back tomorrow morning at 836, I will see you then only on 980 CJME and 650 CKOM.